This is John Chernus again, and in this lesson we're going to be looking at the second layer in the four layer TCP IP model, which is IP, or the internet layer. So to study this, we can go back to that session I captured uh, in the beginning of the lessons, which was that time I went to the San Diego State website. So I'm going to again open the same capture file by double clicking on it. And we can study IP right from that uh, that uh, capture session. So this will take just a moment to load and then we'll go ahead and get started. So we know a little bit about IP already. I've shown you um, source and destination IP addresses. I've talked about how the subnet mask is used by your computer to figure out if the uh, destination you're trying to reach is on the same or different network. That was in one of the earlier lessons. And as you recall, if the destination is on a different network than your source computer, your own computer, you have to send the packet or frame to the default gateway uh, that's connected on the same network as your host and then the frames will be forwarded along their merry way until it gets to the destination. So here we can uh, look at this and kind of scroll through it and um, when you look at this you may think, oh I don't see a lot of IP uh, protocol frames, but to be honest with you, you're going to find IP in pretty much all of these frames. So this is not a problem. So what we need to do is just basically start opening up frames and looking at them and you're going to see that uh, most of these frames do have an IP header, uh, which is the internet layer. You'll notice on these first couple of frames with ARP, remember we were going back with ARP, ARP's purpose was to provide an IP address and then get the MAC address from that. So you'll notice in these you don't really see an IP header, um, but the information is in this address resolution protocol. You can see the source IP here. Actually, this is the source IP, uh, the target IP, because the router is talking to me in this one. I should have started with this one, sorry. On this one, I'm actually sending out the broadcast from my machine. That's my IP, and I'm basically looking for this IP. So you can see IP is alive and well in these frames for ARP. Once we have all the IP information identified, you can see down here when I remember what these three frames were, the TCP handshake, where I was establishing a connection with the San Diego State web server to download the web content. Here we can clearly see the source and destination IP addresses, and if we break it down further under Internet Protocol, you can see a lot more information. You can see how long the header is in bytes. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But what I want to focus on, what's primarily in the uh, IP header, is the source address and the destination IP address and that helps uh, that's the purpose of that is to identify uh, where we need to deliver this frame we need to deliver it to some network somewhere and then the router that's actually connected just like the router that's connected to my computer in my house talks directly to me the router on the other side of the communication that is on the same network as San Diego State University uh, as web server will be the actual final device that delivers the packet to the uh, web server for San Diego State. If you go back to the demo on that uh, commercial program I showed you that uh, gives you a graphical view, I believe it's a visual route is the name I'm thinking of. If you go back and look at that demonstration when I went to the San Diego State website, the router right before the last uh, device identified in that graphical representation is the router that actually delivers the packet to the San Diego State web server. So that is basically what IP is all about. Finding the destination network is obtained from looking at the, the source and destination IP. The destination IP, when you apply that subnet mask, it will tell you the destination network. You can forward it along those router paths until it actually gets to the final router that is responsible to deliver the frame to the final uh, host on your on your delivery. It's very much like, uh, I, I've said this over and over, how uh, mail gets delivered. Mail goes into a uh, local uh, area first, wherever you live. It's picked up and collected. It's then put on a truck or an airplane and taken to another location that's a little bit closer to the final destination. Eventually it gets forwarded along and delivered until it finally gets uh, matched up with other mail going to the same place and then it's taken to the final uh, delivery point which is the post office nearest to the delivery that's kinda like how a router works and then that uh, postal worker actually loads the truck with that letter and delivers it to your 
uh, destination to the, the, the address that you mailed the letter to. It's very similar to networking, it almost is identical to the concept. So I don't want to spend too much time on IP, just want to show you that if you look through these frames, here's an HTTP frame, uh, these all have internet protocol headers and that's the internet layer. So that's the main thing I wanted to get out of this. If I just keep scrolling through here, you see lots of communications going on back and forth between my computer and the San Diego State website and uh, you see a few other communications going on here but no matter what you look at here you're seeing there's an internet protocol header with source and destination IPs here's a different IP I'm not sure what that one was about but basically that's uh, all I want to talk about with IP it's in the internet layer and it's the source and destination IP that gets put into the packet that goes out onto the network to tell you where to deliver there's no guaranteed delivery at the IP internet layer it's all about just addressing source and target all the guarantee of delivery is handled uh, in the second, I should say the third layer, the transport layer, and if you need guaranteed delivery, you're going to use TCP. If you don't need guaranteed delivery, you're going to use UDP in the transport layer, uh, just like we've been studying. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop now, and we'll move on to the next lesson.